They say that Ivan the Terrible was a psychopath and a murderer, and he killed as many people in Russia as even Stalin did. Most of all this Tsar liked to kill his aristocracy, but not only in Moscow, but all over the country. And thus as a result of repression almost half of Russia was mowed out. Well, judge for yourself. During the Oprichnina in 1570 crazy Tsar sent to suppress the Novgorod revolt against Moscow, his same crazy army, and they in a few days killed as many as 700,000 Novgorodians. And this is given that throughout Russia lived only a few million. However, other sources report about 50,000 victims, but this is too much, given that, according to reliable sources, at that time in Novgorod lived only 30,000, and even that together with the suburbs. So a new figure appears 27,000, but it also somehow doesn't dance, because after the end of the massacre, the city had not only 3,000 inhabitants, but by an order of magnitude more. And here the modern scientists have decided to stop on a figure of only a little more than 2,000 executed rioters, and this figure has reached us in the official state documents. And 700,000, which write all sorts of contemporaries, a specific fantasy, given that after the death of Ivan the Terrible was very fashionable to publish all sorts of chronicles of his atrocities. In addition, a lot of data does not allow us to talk about any devastation and depopulation of the city. The very next year Novgorod appears as an even more populous and even richer city, moreover the king took refuge there with the state treasury during the raid on Moscow of the Crimean Khan, and he was not afraid of it. A year later, when the Livonian War began, Grozny made Novgorod his home base and set up his headquarters there, fearing neither revenge nor new revolts. Besides, there is plenty of both direct and indirect evidence that in 1570, during the pogrom, many of the events that appear in later chronicles describing the atrocities of the Oprichniks did not take place. But this is only one episode of Ivan the Terrible's atrocities, and they say that there were many such episodes. However, given that all information about Ivan the Terrible's mass repressions we get exclusively from foreign sources, there is little faith in them at all. Of course there were repressions, but not in the numbers or by the methods we are told today. There is no confirmed information about those actually killed by order of the Tsar, but it seems that the repression only touched the most obvious enemies of Ivan the Terrible, and they were more than can quote official documents. And times were terrible then, not only in wild Russia, but also in civilized Europe. In two years after the Novgorod pogrom, the Bartholomew Night took place in France, when by the order of the mother of the French King Charles IX Catherine de Medici more than 30,000 Protestants were killed, 3,000 of them in Paris, the rest were killed in other places. It was a real massacre, and the Catholics slaughtered not only the male Huguenots, but also their wives and young children. Europe at the time was so shaken by this event that France received diplomatic complications with virtually all Protestant states. And even Ivan the Terrible did not stand aside, condemning the French massacre in a letter to the German Emperor Maximilian II. He wrote thus, the French king acted inhumanly and madly, killing so many people, including babies, did the mad Russian Tsar have the right to such a condemnation? Of course he had, because during the seven years of Oprichnina in Russia, several times less subjects of Ivan the Terrible were killed than his subjects were killed by Charles IX in a few days. Go further and consider the madness of another contemporary of Ivan the Terrible, the Spanish King Charles V, who fought Protestants in Holland, then a possession of Spain. For 40 years of his reign, 1516 to 1556, this monarch ordered to kill more than 30,000 heretics, and not just kill, and kill excruciatingly buried alive in the ground or burn at the stake. And this is only the documented data, but how many Protestants were actually killed is unknown. The son of Charles V. Philip II during the same 40 years of his reign surpassed his pope by executing by even more subtle methods more than 120,000 of his subjects, mostly Protestants too. Do you feel the magnitude? No Ivan the Terrible dreamed of such results. A famous character in English history, King Henry VIII was less bloodthirsty than his Spanish colleagues, he did not act on religious grounds, but on social ones, and he killed relatively few people. He issued a vagrancy law under which any vagrant could be executed at the place of arrest without trial. At the time, England was pursuing a policy of disempowering the peasants, who had no choice but to be miserable. And so the king issued an edict that led to so many casualties in just the first few years 12,000 hanged vagrants. And during the entire reign of the king, 1509 to 1547, 
up to 80,000 were executed, and although some experts find this figure exaggerated, not by much. Mary I, daughter of Henry VIII, who after him became Queen of England, was even nicknamed Bloody for the fact that she, too, was not all right in terms of reprisals against her subjects. She was on the throne only for five years, 1553 to 1558, but during this time she managed to burn at the stake more than 300 high-ranking noblemen, and in general 10,000 other noblemen, whom she considered her enemies and traitors, were killed. And this is only the official data, because a lot of other people were executed, which nobody counted. And such European monarchs before Ivan the Terrible and afterwards, who were famous for their cruelty, can be counted in great numbers. If we count the number of their victims for each particular monarch, it turns out that the mad Russian Tsar is one of the last in this parameter. By the way, we should not forget other facts of atrocities, which can be associated with European monarchs, in particular, the murder of natives in the colonies. Christopher Columbus alone, who received almost royalty in Cuba which he discovered, within only three years ordered to torture and kill more than one million, local Indians whom he suspected of concealing gold. Thus, by the end of the 15th century, not a single local aborigine remained in Cuba and the surrounding islands. 